Welcome to Lesson 2-2, Multiplying with Decimals. Today we're going to talk about how to multiply decimals by whole numbers, multiply decimals by other decimals, and how to solve problems involving multiplying with decimals. Alright, so for our vocabulary for today, we have the word product. And product it means the answer to a multiplication problem. So again, product doesn't mean to multiply. It implies that we multiply, but it doesn't mean multiply. It means the answer to a multiplication problem. So 12 times 2 equals 24. 24 would be the product. Alright, so when we're multiplying decimals, and I strongly encourage you guys to write down these steps, Okay, so when we multiply with decimals, what we really like to do often is we like to line up our decimals. And you don't have to do that when you're multiplying with decimals. It actually makes it longer and more difficult. So we're really going to focus on not doing that. So first, you line up your numbers on the right side. In this case, I have 2 tenths times 6 tenths. So when I line them up, I line up the 2 and the 6. In this case, I ended up lining up my decimal. And I wanted to do this for the first one because I want to show you how it's different for multiplication and division in terms of where the decimal goes. Okay, so after you line up your numbers on the right side, we ignore that decimal and we multiply. So your problem ends up looking like this. Now, you don't literally have to show this step. I just want you to understand that we ignore the decimals as we're multiplying. Okay, so after we do that is when we place our decimal. So here we're going to get 2 times 6 is 12. Oops, I guess I should write in not black so you can see it. So we have 12. Carry the 1. 0 times 6 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. Now, I'm actually going to stop here because after you're done multiplying with 6, we just put a 0 here, and then we multiply by 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. So we don't need all those extra zeros. And since it's the last number, there's no reason to keep going. Okay, so, so far, I have that I have an answer of 12. Well, when we place the decimal, typically students think, oh yeah, I just bring it straight down and I get 1 and 2 tenths. But that is not the case. When you're placing your decimal, you have to count how many numbers you have after the decimals. So you look back into your original problem and I have 1, 2. Since I have two numbers after the decimal, that's how far to the left I have to put my decimal in my answer. So I move the decimal 1, two places to the left. So it ends up right here. So I don't just write this because it's a number I have to make sure to put that zero in front. So it is zero and twelve hundredths as my answer. Alright, so we're also going to talk a little bit about expressions here. When we're working with expressions, you can evaluate expressions by substituting. So what you're going to do is you're going to substitute for x. So in this case, they tell us that x is equal to 4 and 400, I'm sorry, 4 and 47 thousandths. So wherever I see x, I'm going to replace it with the 4 and 47 thousandths. So that's what, and then evaluate. Evaluate means find the answer. When you see a number and a variable, so a variable is a letter that's representing a number. It's kind of standing in for a number that can change. And we'll talk more about that with expressions. So what we do is we replace that x with whatever we're told x is equal to in the problem. So instead of 3 and 3 tenths times x, it becomes, oops, 3 and 3 tenths times 4 and 47 thousandths. So then now what we do is we follow our steps. We line up the right side and we multiply. Okay, so when I multiply, I get 7 times 3 is 21, carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14, carry the 1. 0 times 3 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and 3 times 4 is 12. When I'm done with the 3, I put a 0 as my placeholder. 7 times 3 is 21, carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 
12 plus 4 is 14, or 2 is 14. Carry the 1, 0 times 3 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and 4 times 3 is 12. So we end up getting the same thing on bottom and on top, just over one place, because since this 3 is over one place value, all of my products should be over one place value. Okay, so now, once I've done that, now I can place my decimal. Well, if I look back at my numbers, I have one, two, three, four numbers after decimals. So that means I start from the right and I move one, two, three, four places to the left and place my decimal. So my answer is 13 and 3,551 ten thousandths. Typically we won't be working with numbers this big, but I wanted to show you how this works when you have lots of numbers after the decimals and in both numbers. Okay, so now I want to look at what happens when you multiply by a power of 10. Powers of 10, so like 10 to the first power is 10. That's what we talk about with powers. So in this case the powers of 10 are 10, 100, 1,000, because every time, so 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 10 times 10, so it's when you're multiplying by 10 multiple times. So 10,000, so all of these here are multiple, or sorry, not multiples, well they are multiples of 10, but we call them powers of 10. Well when I take 4 times 10, I get 40. We know that. That makes sense to us. But what's actually happening here is that our decimal is right here. So on the 4, the decimal is right here. So when I go to 40, or when I multiply by 10, what ends up happening is that decimal moves one place to the right because when I multiply by 10, my number is getting 10 times bigger, and that's what our place values are worth. So I'm moving that decimal over one place to the right and I get 40. So with 4 times 100, again, I have 4 and the decimal's here. So I move it twice to the right because there's two zeros because it's times 10 two times. So it's like 4 times 10 times 10. So I move it twice to the right and then I add two zeros and I get 400. Well, this makes sense to us. I'm showing you how, like, what is going on here and what's actually working out mathematically, and it's not that we just add the zeros to the end. You're actually moving the decimal, not just adding zeros. So now when we take this into a decimal form, we don't just add zeros. This all has to do with moving the decimal. So in this case, I have to multiply by 10, and I have to move the decimal once to the right. Well, my decimal is in front of the 4 this time, so when I move it once to the right, I actually get 4 as my answer. Let's try it with 100. Again, I have 0 and 4 tenths, and I have two zeros, so I have to move the decimal twice to the right. right so we have 40. So 4 tenths times 100 is 40. We're going to practice with this some more, and this should be something that you are easily able to do more towards the middle of the year, but I want you to start getting used to it because it makes mental math a lot easier for you, and it makes multiplying by big numbers like 10, 100, 1,000 really nice and really simple. And I promise you it will all come back around in other parts of your math as well. All right, so what you're going to do tonight is you are going to solve these two problems here. You're going to evaluate 5x for each value of x. So remember, 5x means 5 times x. And then you replace this x with the values given. So in this case, the value given is 3. And then this is a different problem, so you do it again over here, and you replace it with 4 and 7 ninths. Okay, so it's going to look like 5 times 3 over here, or 5 and 7 tenths, sorry, forgot the 7 tenths, times 3 
times 3 over here, and then 5 and 7 tenths times 4 and 79 hundredths over here. And then down here, I want you to, without setting it up as a multiplication problem, I want you to find the product of these problems. And I just want you to work on swinging your decimal, because they're all multiples, or I'm sorry, powers of 10. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to write them down or email me so we can go over them in class.